As you can probably uh, hear guys, there's quite a bit of wind knocking about. It's fairly windy and it was pouring it down earlier on, but uh, the weather's pretty good right now. Uh, I've been tagged by Gearheart Knives and Outdoors. So the main aim of uh, today's video is to highlight my three favourite knives. I'm going to set up for the day, uh, get a fire going and show you some new stuff. I've got some dehydrated food sort of like a pasta bolognese type thing. I'm gonna try that out. Not really into uh, dehydrated foods, stuff like that in a packet, but um, it's gonna be an honest opinion. I'm also gonna be making a hot drink out of um, Hawthorne berries. That deer's around, I can hear it. I can hear it knocking about. There's a lot of crackling uh, to do with the wind, but uh, yeah, she's about somewhere. Hopefully, I'll be able to catch her on the um, on the top camera, the decent camera. So, guys, stick with us, and uh, I'll see you in a short while. situation is I have not brought my tripod I've left it at home aren't I? so this makes filming particularly difficult so we're gonna have to uh, try and just do what we can I have got a little tripod and I mean it is only small usually I'd use it for lighting at night but uh, we'll see what we can do Let's see what we can do see what we can muster up We've got blue skies at the moment, which is fantastic because uh, on the way here it was raining for a good uh, two hours. So, and the forest is fairly—it's um, been damaged really by the storms. It's not in good shape. But uh, who oh, do you hear that? It was a tawny owl. Definitely a tawny owl, that. But uh, I've set up a tarp just to give us a bit of protection from the sun whilst I'm filming. So I'm gonna have to get some decent tinder and uh, some kindling and uh, get this fire going cause uh, the light's going and I'm starving. I need some food. Top of the tree just here. That's oh, just been snapped off and it's hanging down. Just... I've got some wandering to do because uh, the forest is pretty uh, damp. As I was saying earlier, the, we've had a bit of a downpour these past few days and um, it's left the ground very, very soggy. And I'm going over to my favorite tree now to get some pine pitch and also some tinder and kindling have a check this out we're just taking the surface layers off without going right back to the uh, to the bark. You know what I'm saying guys? 
they look after the trees. They look after us, don't they? Now it's uh, time for go and finding the kindling. Seen some rocks uh, on the way around, so as I've been gathering all the gear, all the kindling and the uh, pine pitch. So I'm going to I want to uh, pick them up and use them for the fire. I've just got to remember where they are now. Ah, the weather does not know what to do with itself. One minute it's blue skies, next minute. We're uh, getting ready for a downpour. Yeah, once the base lays down, I'm uh, pretty much laughing. That is. I don't know what that is, that is some sort of hawk. I just managed to chop this here slightly damp from a fallen tree, so that's what we're going to go for. Let's get this cracking now. Get all that going. See it bubbling away there guys. Right, I'll transfer it now to the to the fire. Right, it's time to get that brew on and get some food on. Let's get that spider. I've got a spider there crawling on the camera. Money spider. You never know, I might get come into some money. That's what it looks like inside, and what you do is you take out that little blue bag, take that out because that's just there to keep it fresh. And the idea is you fill, actually fill this bag up to the mark that you can see there going across where my thumb is there and then you fold it over so let's just see how practical this is Go on. So I think it takes 350 litres thereabouts uh, 350 millilitres let's see much cup full my titanium cup well there's a stick some more water in that now so I can make a brew well 
because the fire is toasty. So you leave that for 15 minutes. And that all depends really on the weather, what the weather's like. So if it's minus, you might have to leave it a little bit longer, but 15 minutes thereabouts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold that over now. Seal it. Seal the bag. And just fold it like so. Do not put it near the fire. You don't need to. Just need to keep it there. Sort of like out of the way. Edge. Get out of it. It's not for you. Leave that for 15 minutes and then I will get back to you as soon as uh, that's sorted. Right now I've got a brew on or I've got the water on and we're going to have some Hawthorn uh, hot drink as well with this little meal. See how that goes. As you can see there, it's very, very, uh, well, leathery. Very leathery. So I'm going to add that to the brew and then see what happens. I harvested this about two years ago. And then just did what you do as far as drying it up. And what will happen is that will just turn into a bit of a jelly and flavour the water and then I'll be able to eat these uh, separately and they're softer so I've put four little strips in there and see how that works out I'll let that uh, brew for a little bit So the first knife I want to talk about guys is the uh, cold steel spike bowie knife. This is a neck knife and uh, it's got a plain edge and it's uh, got a, like a bowie point. I'll show you. It's got like a bowie point. It's sharp in a similar way to a Scandi, sort of like similar type of Scandi grind. Uh, that's got a 10 degree edge on it though. And the length of the blade is 10.1 centimeters. And the overall length, you know, given the uh, the handle and so forth, is 20.3 centimeters. It weighs 65 grams. It's a full tang knife and uh, it's a fairly decent steel. I'll try and give you a demo here. It's extremely, extremely sharp and got a fair bite to it. Let's see if I can show you this way. It's just an handy neck knife, really. It's quite long for a neck knife. It comes in this Kydex. Sheath. As you can see there, it's very secure. I'm having to show you this, guys, on the smallest tripod I've ever used in my life. And that's sort of like give you a bit of a demo on it. But it is really, really good grip. And it's excellent for feathering, curls, as you can see. Not a problem. I'm fairly new to this knife, if I'm honest. And um, cold steel, it says, it's like an American firm, but these are made in Taiwan. So, even though they are made in Taiwan, the standard that is expected is same, is the same as wherever 
else they made in the world so um, so I wouldn't write it off just because it's made in Taiwan it's an excellent little uh, knife it comes in handy for me anyway as a neck knife so that I would say is number three in my uh, top three knives for now So the second one I might show you is not really a knife. I don't think it's a knife anyway, it's a it's more of a chopper, I would say. Uh, that's Tarava Scrama. And this is an absolute beauty. The edge is still, I mean I've had this for about a year and a half now. The edge is still spot on. I've sharpened it a couple of times. And uh, I've got a load of stats as far as this one's concerned. Um, but if you look on my Taraba Scrama test video, and I'll leave you a link uh, in the description, and I'll also leave you a link at the top of this page as well, top, top of this image, somewhere around maybe here, something like that, then uh, there's a full video I've done on this baby. Uh, but as you saw earlier on, it's chops no problem um, it doesn't replace an axe but it's just so so nice to have weighs around about 525 grams and uh, the chopping edge it this part here is 34 degrees and then this part here the what I call the, the feathering part these four inches it's about four inches it's slightly different the edge and that's at 25 degrees and the overall thickness is 4.2 millimeters if you think about the spine there uh, and the width is 46 mil so and again this is a full tang and I've got my lanyard there for this little piece and that there can be used for all sorts of things to hang it up to uh, take out um, pegs so forth um, and snapping things because you can use this as a bit of a lever but, uh, very nice very nice the Tarava Scrama beautiful thing uh, the handle is a rubber handle and uh, it's very comfortable when you're chopping you don't get the shock through your arm uh, or your wrists so you use it one hand or you can use it two yeah I definitely put this as my second um, must have top knife or chopper comes in here comes in a leather sheath or you can buy a leather sheath but uh, I've got a plastic it's like a plastic cover plastic sheath and then I put it inside uh, Molly uh, British military uh, scabbard and I've just done a few mods to this I've got myself a little uh, this is this type of thing is used by the uh, RAF you can use it to cut wire and stuff like that but it's, it's mainly used for if you need to escape from an aeroplane you've got to you've got to cut your way out of the uh, the belts and so forth so it's a handy little tool to have with me. That's a great all round piece of kit. It's been used a fair bit today, but this knife is my favourite. It's got a little lanyard there that I've put on, and uh, quite sharp. Buddy, come here. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty sharp, and uh, this one's been designed by Roger Harrison. And uh, I've done, 
I've done a, a video on this particular knife as well. It's a full tang knife, and you can see it on the uh, on the Woodsman series. But this knife is just absolutely outstanding. It's I've had it now for about three years. Used it plenty. Um, the full length um, is around about twenty. Uh, Cent, uh, 20 centimeters um, the length of the blade is 8.8 .8 centimeters it's made from uh, high carbon steel I think it's about uh, 6 720 uh, K720 should I say and uh, it's pretty good as a Scandi grind uh, and it's HRC 58 to 60 this handle this handle is quite amazing because it's a bog oak handle. So what that means is, uh, yeah, the low oxygen level in the in the peat stops stops this from rotting. And it's very sought after material. So um, yeah, very nice. This is my number one. I've got to say it's my number one at the moment. Uh, there are a few other knives that I'm going to be investing in soon, but this particular one, I would definitely rate as uh, number one for me right now and I definitely recommend it the woodsman knives they do uh, Castron do another one and it's a uh, forest knife the curly birch handle and I'll show you that one in a minute so this is the uh, curly birch handle and if you notice with the the forest knife the woodsman forest by Castron it's straight where well, this one's hooked it's got a slight hook on it so again this is full tang but uh the, hand the handle is beautiful and with this full tang as it is it gives gives me greater purchase as you can see it needs cleaning because well all my all my knives just one second you know, all my knives are, are used regularly so this is going to need cleaning but yeah again Designed by Roger Harrison, made by Castrum. This one is a Scandi grind, very, very sharp. And you run it across your uh, your nail. Yeah. As you can see, taking parts of my nail off. I don't know if you can see that properly there, guys. And this is the uh, the sheath that goes with it. Very nice. So yeah, it has uh, these black liners as well, and liners inside the uh, curly birch with the brass screw fittings there. This is probably on a par with the uh, the Woodsman bog oak handle. Got some serious creaking here going on from the trees around me. Hey, you're in my seat, girl. You're in my seat. Right, this has been going now for. I reckon this has been cooking, cooking now for at least 20 minutes. Spaghetti bolognese. So this is it guys, this is the, uh, maybe the creme de la creme, who knows. I'll tell you in one second. Mm. Mm. I'm going in for a second spoonful, so can't be that bad. That's the consistency of it. There's a serious amount of meat in there. You've got your carbs, as far as the pasta is concerned. There's a fair amount in there. So it's 30% beef mince. Then there's orzo pasta. 30% durum wheat, semolina. Tomatoes, 24%. Onions, garlic, tomato puree, olive oil, beef stock, salt, oregano, pepper, Star anise, 
bay leaves and citric acid. Well, you can reseal this bag as well. You know, if you're in the middle of something. The camera's lopsided there, guys. You should have seen, you want to see the tripod that it's on, it's just disgraceful. Disgraceful, it is. So the guy I got this from, he's called Nick, and um, I'll leave a link down below in the uh, description box. Mmm. It is nice, actually. He's going to knock 20% off these food rations, but what you've got to say is, you've got to put in with your order, Hupfin Bushcraft Firepot. Firepot is the brand. So, um... Yeah, he's going to knock 20% off. And uh, he sells all other stuff as well. He does... Uh, these type of jackets. He sells boots. Army surplus. Plus other makes. But you can go on his website. I'll leave a link uh, for his website. Like I say, in the description box. And he's just give us some of these. That's all he's done. He's not paying for this, or I'm not being paid for this. But he's a good fella. And I buy a lot. A lot of gear from him as far as sleeping bags and so forth. I know now he's going to be doing some of the uh, DD tarpaulins. But he's got some excellent bushcraft um, bergens or rucksacks. So give it a try. I'll give his website a try. Have a look. You might find something that you like. Now this isn't too bad. I've got to say. It's not quite as nice as the last type of boil in the bag meal that I've tried. That was uh, my mate Mickey. That was like, um, I mean, Nick does these as well. It was a British Army ration pack. And these, uh, that sauce was amazing. Made in Thailand. And it was like, um, that was like a bolognese sauce. Very, very tasty. But this is good. This is good stuff. Just to give you an idea of the, um, the typical values, this is like per pack. So energy, you'll get 635 calories in one of these. Fat, 19 grams, of which saturated, 7.3 grams. Carbohydrates, you're going to get 79.7 grams. Uh, Fibre, you're going to get 37 grams. Protein, you're going to get 35 grams. It's quite a lot of protein, isn't it? 35.5 should I say and salt you're going to get 1.5 grams so yeah now the, the good thing about these is they leave you with um, I mean if you if you want to if you want to travel light which I do obviously because I'm carrying other things as well which I wouldn't normally carry if I was um if I weren't filming, I'd be a lot lighter than what I, I usually am. So I've got to keep, keep weight down to a minimum. So I'll do my cooking in this. Keep me water in that canister. And the great thing about this now is because I've poured some hot water in here, I can just fold this up, put it back into my bergen. I'm not going to be uh, throwing it anywhere, because that would be daft, wouldn't it? What numpty would decide? Oh, right, yeah. I'm in a beautiful location. In the beautiful countryside, forest. Go on, bad, you can have that a little bit. And I just chuck all my crap everywhere. No one's going to do that, are they? No one would do that. Not anyone with any, any sense, anyway. 
yeah, and pride and dignity and self-worth. Anyway, yeah, my point being is I can fold this up now, put it in my bag, and I can still utilise this for, as you will already know, the um, the Hawthorne Brew. Yeah, but I just want some. There you go. Yeah, you can have that. Oh, good girl. You're not having a spoon as well. You don't need a spoon. Go on. No, here, yeah. go on, you have that. Now if the dog, dog don't eat it, that's not a good sign. Just give it time. Right, let's just check this out now. So yeah guys, that is looking just a wee bit murky. Now I'm going to tell you what it tastes like. Well, that's, that is different. Oh God, that's like, I've just eaten a load of garlic and this has just cleared the palate totally. Oh God, not in a pure vodka type of way. Very, um, very refreshing that, very refreshing. You can't have none of this, Madge. You can't, look, you can't have that there. Go on. Go on. Good girl. Good girl. Go on. You don't have to just lick the wrapper. Come on. Oh, can you not get it out or something? There you go. Right. Check that out. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is just see what, um, what these taste like and get them out. I can even get that. Get the spoon. Right, that is looking more like uh, something that can be eaten. I need a drink. Oh, what the drink has done. That process there is just taking the sweetness out of the actual the fruit leather, put it into the drink, and then left the fruit leather tasting like, uh, I don't know, some sort of rind. I don't know. I think I'm waffling now. Ah, the drink tastes nice. That tastes all right. But the fruit leather, you would only eat that in a survival situation. Mm. Nah, sack that. Sack that. So yeah, I'd just like to thank Gearheart Knives and Outdoors for um, tagging me and uh, I hope you've learned something. I hope you found it useful. Um, like I say, them are my three favourite uh, knives at this moment in time. And uh, the ones that I'm using most regularly. Uh, that may change in six months time. Who knows? It all depends on uh, things like um, funds and um, acquiring new, um, new blades, new knives and stuff like that. So, uh, and it takes a bit of research, doesn't it? You don't, you don't just go out and buy a knife willy-nilly. You've got to find the right one, the right steel, the right type of uh, blade length, right type of grip. You need the right type of grip. And um, hopefully one that's come with a few recommendations, you know, so. So guys, let's leave it there, eh? I will see you on the next hook fin. Uh, hopefully it won't be as long as this video was. 
uh, from the previous one. But uh, it's been my pleasure. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you've had a good time. I hope you've had some fun. And um, I will see you guys on the next one. Ciao for now. guys caught me doing my morning shave never mind them other razors this is the type of razor you need for the real man the real man never mind all these poncy adverts fancy razor this will do me stick with it guys Chivalry means everything. I could have a laugh, aren't you?